All right, let's check out how ridiculous this is on the bosses. Well, there you have it. Easy money, easy money, easy money. Now, let's go over and do this whole thing and see how it goes, right? So, I'm the Jig. We're talking about a build that I am so bad at playing that it is not funny. We're going to be talking about the Rapid Fire Rogue today, which unfortunately I am literally garbage at playing. But, the caveat is you will see that somebody who is bad can still do the things. So, let's hop right into it. Let's start with the skill tree, as we normally do. So, this one's not that difficult put together it's really easy to get going it's just do you like play style or not i like it i'm just bad at it start out with heart seeker this is going to be building our combo points so this is going to be doing a little cc it's going to give us some attack speed it's going to give us some crit chance whenever it critically strikes you get attack speed for four seconds double the amount of the enemy is vulnerable and then it has an extra chance to pierce deal a little more damage the reason rapid fire this is a big one so my damage could be higher you'll see why when we get to the gear section but I got 13 out of 5, which is not, you know, that's not bad. Um, so this is our main damage. We're using an imbue to make this ridiculous. As you can see, we got combo points. Fires extra arrows. Just makes it a little better. Makes our damage per arrow really big. So it gives it an increased crit chance up to 40% for the 8th arrow per arrow you shoot. And then does increased critical strike damage for 5 seconds after you evade. So what you're supposed to do and what I don't do um is you're supposed to animation cancel your rapid fire with evade and i'm just mm, sturdy damage to close reduction which is great and then siphoning strikes when you're close it's going to heal you a little bit on lucky hit chance we got one point into shadow step this just give us unstoppable to get out of dodge if we need help we got one point into cow traps to move over and enhance cow traps to make them taste increased damage as you can see i do not have increased duration on this build because well i'll show you when we get to the gear and then Caltrops now deal cold damage and chill. We don't need the extra critical strike chance because we're real close to 100% um, every time we use rapid fire. We're using weapon mastery for the extra damage with bows against vulnerable enemies. If you're happening to use a crossbow, you get a little bit extra critical strike damage, which is great. One point into dash also just for movement. We got one point into concussive to knock down enemies, giving us an extra little bit of crit chance. And then we have trick attacks. When we critically strike a dazed enemy, we get to knock them down. So we're dazing and critting all the time, which is amazing. As usual, our big damage reduction is Dark Shroud. We're activating this with Umber's aspect. Got Enhanced Dark Shroud. Dark Shroud have a 14% chance not to be consumed. And then Subverting Dark Shroud, just giving us movement speed. The reason we don't, you will not need to take Countering Dark Shroud. Because as long as your gear is even remotely close, um, your... Rapid Fire is going to have 100% crit chance. Three points into Agile. It's going to give us 12% dodge after we use an ability that has a cooldown. We use abilities cooldowns all the time. Three points into Exploit. Increased damage of health and enemies. Three points into Malice. Increased damage of vulnerable enemies. We got vulnerable and yeah, we do that all the time. We are using Cold Imbuement. Imbue your weapon to chill and yeah. And then enhanced cold imbuement, 40% chance to make enemies vulnerable. Hey, there's our vulnerable chance. And then mixed, 20% damage to crowd control enemies, double against frozen. We're always freezing, so yeah. Frigid Finesse, I wish I had more ranks of this. This is what you want on your neck. Increased damage to shield enemies, double to frozen enemies. Down here, we've got two points into Innervation, giving us back some energy. And then we've got three points into Alchemist Fu uh, Fortune. Non-physical damage we deal has increased lucky hit chance. We're trying to have every rapid fire cold imbued and yawning during talking. Oh, that's so much fun. All right. And we got one point in adrenaline rush, just giving us a little more energy regeneration. Once we get to haste, giving us increased movement speed and attack speed when we are below maximum, 50% uh, maximum energy. And then the big boy point here is precision. When you cast markman skill, you gain a stack of precision. You gain additional stacks if it critically strikes once per cast. Once you're at four stacks, your next marksman, ultimate, or core skill is guaranteed to critical strike. Deal increased critical strike damage, consuming all stacks precision, further increased by 15% of your critical strike damage bonus. 
I have 2,400-ish critical strike, so we've got 396.2% extra damage on our precision. Then in our paragon, before we get started on paragon, before we look at any points, I'm going to move this off the screen. Don't cookie cutter this. Get what you need in your paragon. Do what you need to do. Just activate the glyphs, just like always. All right, so let's hop right into it. So, starter board here. We're grabbing Canny, every five intelligence, blah, blah, non-physical damage, don't care. Non-physical damage increases your non-physical damage by up to 10% for 15 seconds. Each arrow counts as one thing of non-physical. So, blah, then we're at full stacks of this, right? It's amazing. I'm going to move on up into the exploit weakness board. We all use exploit weakness. It's amazing. They take extra damage from us when we first deal damage to them and become um, vulnerable. It's amazing. They, it stacks up really fast because we're hitting really fast. On this board, we're using control. You deal increased damage of slow and chilled enemies. We slow and chill all the time, right? And then it's got a little extra bonus of giving us some more damage to crowd control. Over here, we've got cheap shot, which is dealing increased damage for each crowd control enemy. We crowd control everybody. So this is always up and doing what it's supposed to be doing. We got devious. When you hit an enemy with an attack that applies this crowd control effect, they take 2% extra damage up to 20 seconds. Everything we do applies to crowd control because we slow them, right? Chill them. Then down here we got deadly ambush. Increased damage against enemies affected by trap skills. So this is just amazing. Chip. Physical damage increases damage enemies take from you by 1% up to 10%. So um, you can also replace chip with fluidity. Where is fluidity? I don't know. We're actually using fluidity as well. My bad. All right. Yeah. So you're going to use chip and fluidity in this build. My bad, my bad, my bad. Over here, we're on the Eldritch Bounty. Whenever you imbue a skill, increase damage from it. So we're just doing increased uh, cold damage, which is amazing. We've got combat. Skills of critically strike. Restore some of their energy costs. We don't really have energy problems with this build. It's kind of awesome. And then this also gives you increased critical strike damage, which is our best step. Here we have fluidity. You gain 15% magic, 150% uh, extra damage to all nodes within range, which is awesome because we're using this to get a little extra life and stuff. Whenever you cast an agility skill, you deal increased damage and gain increased energy regeneration. So whenever you dash, shadow step, or use your cow trips, those are all agility skills. So this is just letting us get extra damage. And then here we've got cunning stratagem. Your non-damage combo point bonuses are increased by 33% when you spend three combo points. So it's giving us 33% more arrows. So we're going from nine arrows to 12 arrows. So this is just chef's kiss on top, right? So using combo points, like we were talking about, our gear. I'm using a diarrhea massage. You can get a lot more damage if you use Harlequin Crest. I use Andariel's Visage because I am bad. I like the heal. It keeps me alive. I like to not die. Here, just make sure your chest has Dark Shroud. That's the biggest thing. Mine has energy per second because this is the chest I use on my Barrage build. You don't have to copy this. Get a better one. Get some life or something here. I promise it'll do you better. Here, you want to have crit, crit damage, and then some rapid fire levels. Um, all of those are good. Your pants, just make them tanky. So your imbues, you want one of them to be chance to freeze, chance to slow, chance to whatever. You want four different kinds of chance to CC, right? Because it helps you stagger the boss faster. Ideally, you'd be able to do dodge here, but I needed the poison resistance, so mine has poison res. Here, we've got chance to slow and critical strike damage. On the pants, we've got chance to freeze and dodge chance. On the boots, we have movement speed and chance to mobilize, which is a really good combination. I feel you also just want movement speed and tanky stats on your pants, or on your boots, rather. On your chest, you want the umbrus aspect. Um, well, obviously, it doesn't have to be on your chest, but you want the umbrus aspect to whenever you crit, you get a high chance to get a dark shroud. On your gloves, you want critical strike with core skills, give you attack speed because that's going to be up all the time. On your pants, damaging an enemy has a chance to daze them. You do increase damage to dazed enemies. So that is concussive strikes. On your boots, frostbitten. That's going to give us, we don't care about the grenades part. We care about the increased critical strike damage to frozen or stunned enemies. We want the retribution on our two-hander. 
here you want critical strike damage, max life dex, and then you want you need to have chance for rapid fire to fire twice and critical strike damage. This is an amazing place to get a lot of damage. And then we're using the aspect of retribution to deal more damage to stunned enemies, which is awesome. Also, you want the same, same, same tempers on both, like all three of your weapons. Chance for rapid fire to cast twice and critical strike damage because you need to hit 100%. It's really hard to hit 100%. So if you can hit 100%, hit 100%. You want to use critical strike damage gems in your gear. Get there. Again, it's dex, max life, crit. Here we're using the expectance, giving us after attacking with a basic skill, your next core skill deals extra damage. So we're going one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. It's it's a really easy rhythm to play. Here we have branching volleys. Uh no, we don't have branching volleys. I am playing with the wrong aspect. Hold on, I need to fix that. This has been happening so much. Oh my gosh, guys. All right, so what you're supposed to be doing in this particular section is not having something for barrage. Like I said, I was playing barrage, so I needed to make sure that I was moving stuff around, but apparently I forgot to switch something up. So what that should be, what that should be, is just giving uh it should be rapid it should be giving your um it should be giving your non it should be giving your basic skills 30 percent attack speed my bad my bad we fixed it we fixed it it's there all right cool the other one expectant talk about that increased damage and then here we are using elements for extra damage on cold skills and then we're using edge masters extra damage based on the amount of energy that we have so yeah all right so on your neck you want to have movement speed frigid finesse attack speed ideally you don't really want movement speed here you want all dps things um probably you know like weapon master percent to dex and frigid finesse something like that um you just want this to give you a lot more DPS, but the big thing here, you want to make sure that you have some cold imbue stacks because cold imbue stacks, I recommend trying to get at least six total on your ring and neck. Um, that's what I have. I have six. You don't have to worry about master working it. Eight is plenty since we're alternating. So here we've got, told you what to try to get there. Um, on your ring, crit strike damage, attack speed decks, good roll. Um, if you need a little more crit, you probably don't need it, but you can grab it there. Also, critical strike damage imbue and cold lasts um, three more casts. And then the scoundrel's kiss is going to be our only unique. Um, I would try to master work the rapid fire up, but apparently I just failed and didn't nah, care enough. Right? Um, increase attack speed after dodging an attack. Critical strike damage imbue and cooldown reduction rapid fire. So you want a high roll on the um unique aspect it has to uh now wilds arrows 25 percent increased damage rogue only right so you want to try to get that as close to 25 as possible then to put gems in your gear to do what you need to do to get your resistances up now let me do a 101 i'm probably gonna die don't judge me i just want to show you that even if you're bad with this build you're gonna be able to rip everything's pepperonis um like I said, it's not the easiest build to play, but if you get good with it, it is a very, very, very good build. Again, you can raise your damage up quite a bit by switching to the Harlequin Crest instead of using Andarials. I use Andes because I am a scrub and I want to make sure that I can stay alive. And since I am a scrub that wants to make sure that I can stay alive, I want that extra healing. So shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot, 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 evade, shoot, 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 evade, shoot, 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 evade. Just every time you press the rapid fire button, you want to press the evade button. Um, obviously, you got to have the attacks reduce the cooldown of evade effects on your boots, or it's not going to work. But we want that on basically all of our boots anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, somebody has subscribed while I'm. Uh, Recording, I am sorry for the loud thing in your ear. 
All right, so there we go. There we go. Bang. All right, cool. We're we're making progress. I'm getting a little better at playing the build, but I'm still hot garbage. So shoot, bang, do do do. Whoop. Um, I'm actually surprised I haven't died yet. Probably will at some point. Um, if I do, don't judge me too hard. I know you will, cause you know it's YouTube. But hey, it's fine. Um, as you can see, I'm getting an astronomical amount of healing from my uh, Andes. So, oh my gosh! Oh, I rip and puff around. See, I told you that would happen. I told you that would happen. Um, yeah. So just. Like I said, it's not the easiest build that I've ever played, but it is a good build. It does a lot of damage. It's easy to gear for. It's just not the easiest to play. And since I am a ranged not enjoyer, I'm not the biggest fan of ranged builds. If you guys didn't know that already. Um, yeah, uh, me dying is not the build. It's me being dumb. So, yeah, just take me dying with a grain of salt and stick around. Just to see the kind of damage you can do, like, I probably let my stacks fall off or something. Who knows? I did something dumb. I promise it was me, not the build. I'm just not good at, uh, at ranged builds. Um, so, whoa, I don't like that. Um, but one of the cool things about this build, too, is, like, if you do position yourself correctly and you do, you know dodge and not tank damage because you're a baddie like me um you can do some pretty pretty nasty damage i started the build with a uh boss fight and we're gonna end it with a boss fight so you can see he is just getting rip and pepperoni he is already just done though right they it does a really good amount of damage don't really have to worry about a whole lot but yeah that's the uh that is the build guys super i'm not gonna say easy to play if you're good at ranged you're not gonna struggle if you're me and you're not good at range you're gonna die a bunch as you can see but i still got through it super fast this was still a 101 i'm sure if i put the time in to get better at the build i would not die obviously those of you who play ranged builds are gonna do much better than i did so anyway that's this one guys um stuck around till the end make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one